Ten Years of Love, Gone in a Flash, Chapter 1, Celebrating a Classmate's Baby's Full Moon. We were all having a great time, amidst the joy. Everyone started teasing me and Misty M.O. Augustine, when are you two getting married? I took out a stack of wedding invitations and handed them out with a smile. The date is set. Everyone, please come and join us. Everyone was stunned for a moment. Then they started to tease us again. You two have been together for ten years. It's finally happening. It wasn't easy. Unexpectedly, Misty suddenly changed her expression and poured a glass of cold water over my head. Augustine, you're shameless for using all these tricks to force a marriage. I pointed to the name on the invitation and spoke coldly. Miss M.O., please look carefully. Is the bride's name yours? Misty was stunned, staring wide-eyed at the wedding photo on the invitation. The bride was clearly not her. Everyone else realized what was going on and began to whisper. The bride on the invitation is Lily, not Misty. I knew the wedding photo looked too strange. Turns out it wasn't Misty at all. Misty, embarrassed and furious, tried to snatch the invitation from my hand. I anticipated her move and quickly dodged. She missed the invitation and instead bumped into the edge of the table, looking even more disheveled and ashamed. In the past, I might have felt sorry for her. Now, I just found it laughable. Augustine, you hired someone to humiliate me just to force a marriage. Let me tell you, I don't care at all. You're just deceiving yourself. Her tone was still so arrogant, not even bothering to look at me while speaking. The others started looking at me differently. The class monitor sighed helplessly and stepped in to mediate. Guys, it's a happy day. Don't go too far. You two have been together for so long. You should understand each other. Augustine, even if you're in a hurry, you shouldn't joke about marriage. And Misty, Augustine wanting to marry you is a good thing. You two should talk it out and avoid hurtful words. Misty glared at me coldly. You must have colluded with our classmates. Right. Isn't this whole thing just to force me to marry you in front of everyone? Guess what? I won't cooperate with you. I will never let a despicable person like you succeed. Everyone exchanged puzzled glances, not understanding when they became my accomplices in forcing a marriage. I quickly explained to everyone, I would never joke about something as serious as marriage. Then I publicly reminded Misty, Miss M.O., have you forgotten? We broke up six months ago. Why would I force you to marry me? Did you forget what you did right in front of me half a year ago? You can't seriously think I would forgive you after such a huge mistake, can you? Many classmates knew about what happened half a year ago. Their gazes toward me started to carry a hint of sympathy. Misty's expression began to crack. Are you serious about the breakup? I sneered. What do you think? Do you think I would joke about something like that? Half a year ago, I attended a former classmate's wedding banquet. Misty said she couldn't come, so I went alone. After the banquet, I left the hotel. Just as I stepped out of the elevator, I saw Misty walking in arm in arm with a man. A sharp-eyed classmate pointed out. Augustine, isn't that Misty? I shook my head, denying it. How could it be her? She's at home getting my bath ready. My classmates burst into laughter, saying how lucky I was. After they left, I quietly followed Misty. I watched her walk arm in arm with the men into a hotel room. Before they could close the door, they were already embracing each other. The men chuckled. Senior, aren't you afraid your boyfriend will find out? Misty sneered. So what if he finds out? Would he dare leave me? The men teased. Gia, you're so bad. I love it, but let's be careful. Misty's hand slid down the man's chest. Coward, even if he finds out, I'll just explain a bit, and he'll definitely forgive me. Don't worry, just take good care of Jia. I couldn't take it anymore and kick the door open. Misty, we're breaking up. With that, I turned and left. Chapter 2. I thought Misty would at least pretend and chase after me to explain. However, all I heard were mocking voices behind me. Misty, aren't you going to chase after your boyfriend? Ha. Huh. With that cowardly demeanor. He doesn't deserve me chasing him. He's not even worth one of your fingers. When you lose your boyfriend, don't blame me. Misty, don't worry. He'll come crawling back to me. I felt a chill run through my body, as if I had fallen into an ice cellar. Ten years of love only to be trampled on like this, it was time to end this rotten relationship. Misty's questioning voice reached my ears again. Augustine, do you really dare to break up with me? Are you crazy? I'm just playing around with others. In the end, I'll still be with you, a man as boring as you who would want you after leaving me. Now I'll give you a chance. Apologize to me. Her expression remained as arrogant as ever, but her voice clearly had a hint of panic. In the past, I would have gratefully taken the step she offered me, but now, I no longer wanted to love so humbly. I sneered. Apologize. Misty, are you daydreaming? I'm very busy and don't have time to mess around with you here. With that, I lifted my foot and left, ignoring her embarrassed expression. I've been broken up with Misty for half a year now. My current fiancé is Lily and has nothing to do with Misty. I explained to my classmates, not wanting them to misunderstand any longer. Everyone nodded in understanding. 
Only Misty couldn't accept this reality, still repeating her old lines. Augustine, can you stop this nonsense? This cat and mouse game is really low level. It's exhausting my heart. Can you stop pretending? Let's just live a good life together. I laughed sarcastically. Her so-called good life was just like before. I worked hard to support her, came home to obey her every whim, and endured her endless disdain. Like a servant serving a princess, she would throw a tantrum if anything displeased her. Before being with Lily, I naively thought this was the norm in love. Only after dating Lily did I realize that love is mutual respect and care. But Misty would rather give respect to strangers than to me, her boyfriend of 10 years. She even brazenly cheated on me right in front of my face. That day, after returning from the hotel, I moved out of Misty's house and into my newly bought home. Ten years, from our youthful days to approaching our thirties, I went from having nothing to being a moderately successful entrepreneur. The more materially abundant we became, the thinner our relationship grew. I had no regrets about this relationship, having given it my all, only for it to end in a breakup. In the half year since the breakup, Misty never once reached out to me. She maintained her proud attitude, waiting for me to admit my fault. Later, her friends called me multiple times saying Misty was there and inviting me to hang out. I pretended not to understand their hints and refused. They also pretended not to understand my resolve, thinking I was still playing games with her. Misty, let me remind you once again, we are broken up. I'm not playing with you, I already have a fiancé. With that, I bid farewell to my classmates, ready to pick up Lily. At that moment, Lily appeared before me, her face bright and cheerful. Chapter 3, Agus. I finished work early and came to pick you up. You've always picked me up. It's time I compensated you. Lily's words, like a gentle breeze, touched my heart deeply. I couldn't help but hold her hand. Sure. Then I introduced her to everyone. This is my fiancé, Lily. Lily politely greeted my classmates, and they quickly warmed up to her. Only Misty glared at her with jealous rage. Lily, you bitch, how dare you seduce my boyfriend? We've been together for ten years, and you think you can just step in. You're nothing but a shameless mistress. She lunged forward, trying to pull Lily's hair. I pushed her away, protecting my fiancé behind me. You crazy woman, what gives you the right to slander my love? Misty burst into tears. Augustine, how can you treat me like this? Don't forget, you swore to protect and love me for life. I didn't have time for her. My attention solely on Lily. Lily's face was pale, her body trembling. I picked her up and walked away. Misty blocked my path, continuing her nonsense. Augustine, explain yourself. What do you mean by this? Are you trying to provoke me with Lily? Do you think I don't have other men? She then deliberately picked up her phone and dialed someone. Hey, Junior, come pick me up at the hotel. Ha, huh. she thought this would get to me, but all I cared about was Lily. I coldly looked at Misty, my tone devoid of warmth. I've made it clear, we have nothing to do with each other anymore. Lily is my love, step aside. Misty stared at me, tears streaming down her face. I ignored her and left with Lily. Lily wasn't feeling well, so we cancelled our dinner plans. I put her in the car and sat her in the passenger seat, my tone anxious, what's wrong, if you're not feeling well, I'll take you to the hospital, Lily clung to me, crying softly, Agus, I'm not the person she says I am, I decided to be with you only after you two broke up, I didn't intentionally seduce you, nor do I want to be the other woman in your relationship, I stroked her head, comforting her with concern, I know, I know what kind of person you are, we've known each other for years, how could I be swayed by her words, with my comforting, Lily slowly calmed down, I took her back to our home, where we made dinner together, usually, she cooked, and I came home to a delicious meal, tonight, since I was home early, I showed off my cooking skills, Lily helped me and looked at me with admiration, Agus, I didn't expect you to be so good at cooking, what's the big deal, I've been cooking since I was 16, as I boasted about my culinary skills, Lily suddenly hugged me from behind, her voice filled with heartache, Agus, from now on, let me handle these things. You've worked hard all these years, balancing work and house chores. Hearing this, my eyes welled up. For ten years, I had worked tirelessly to support Misty, while also cooking three meals a day for her, but she never cared or appreciated me. Instead, she criticized me daily, as I was reminiscing about the past. Misty called me. Tomorrow is my mother's death anniversary. You better kneel in front of her grave and beg for her forgiveness. Chapter 4 My face turned pale. Every time Misty used her mother to threaten me, I would give in. This time was no different. After hanging up the phone, I lost my appetite. Lily looked at me cautiously, hesitating several times before speaking. Agus, did something happen? Is it related to Misty? I nodded. It is related to her. But don't worry. I'll handle it soon. To avoid worrying Lily, I forced myself to eat a few bites of food. That night, I tossed and turned, unable to sleep. 
Feeling sorry for me, Lily started singing a lullaby. At first, I wanted to laugh. After all, I'm not a child, who needs to be soothed like this. But as she gently patted my back and hummed a soothing tune, my worries slowly faded. I slept well for the rest of the night. The next morning, Lily had already left for work. She had prepared breakfast and left it in a warming tray for me. She also left a note, reminding me to eat well and rest. Such tenderness touched my heart deeply. But thinking about today being Aunt Mo's death anniversary, I had no appetite. I didn't go to the office all day. Fortunately, the company could run smoothly without me. Misty called countless times, but I didn't answer. It wasn't until the afternoon that I finally left home. As I did every year, I bought some offerings and went to Aunt Mo's grave to pay my respects. Misty was already there, waiting for me, seeing me. A flash of joy crossed her eyes, but it was quickly replaced by arrogance and disdain. Neil, do you think you deserve my mother? My mother kindly took you in, worked hard to raise you, and died early because of you. And how do you repay her? By being with another woman. Have you forgotten that you promised her on her deathbed to take care of me for life? I ignored Misty and quietly placed the offerings. I lit incense and candles for the old lady. After finishing these tasks, I knelt silently in front of her and kowtowed several times. I knelt before Aunt Mo out of respect and gratitude for her. It had nothing to do with Misty. When I was 10, my parents died in a car accident. None of my relatives wanted to take me in. I thought about joining my parents. Thankfully, kind-hearted Aunt Mo took me in. From then on, I treated her like a mother. Unfortunately, the good times didn't last long. When I was 16, Aunt Mo passed away due to illness. Before she died, she asked me to take care of Misty until she became an adult. I tearfully agreed, letting her go in peace. Misty, a year younger than me, liked to follow me everywhere, both at school and at home. I took special care of her, loving her like a sister. However, two years after Aunt Mo's death, Misty asked to date me. Out of a sense of gratitude, I agreed. From then on, Misty comfortably enjoyed my support. Whenever she did something excessive, I would forgive her for Aunt Mo's sake. After all, she was also a poor soul. Having lost her father young and being raised by Aunt Mo alone, after Aunt Mo's death, I was her only family. But my love and indulgence did not earn her understanding. She became more and more unreasonable, trampling on my limits again and again, until I couldn't bear it anymore. If Aunt Mo could see us from the afterlife, she would surely be disappointed by our relationship. Chapter 5 Thinking about it, I count out once more to the old lady. Auntie, I believe I have fulfilled what you entrusted to me. From now on, Misty will have to rely on herself, but after I get married, I'll still visit you often. With that, I stood up, ready to leave the cemetery. Misty angrily grabbed my arm. Do you think you can just say a few words and sneak away? I brought you here to repent, not to escape responsibility. What do you mean she has to rely on herself? Are you really going to abandon me? Kneel down. I'll give you a chance to rephrase. Misty pulled at me, trying to force me to kneel in front of the grave again. In the past, when we argued, she always used this trick to punish me. Back then, I cared about her and was willing to comply. But now, how could I still cooperate? Let go. Stop pulling and tugging at me. I forcefully pushed her away, and she fell hard on her backside. She looked at me in disbelief and, once she realized I had pushed her, started wailing and shouting, Augustine, how dare you push me? You're bullying me in front of my mother's grave. You bastard. Has your conscience been eaten by a dog? If I had known you were this heartless, I would never have asked my mother to take you in. Ungrateful wretch, I'll expose your despicable actions online. With that, she took out her phone and started a live stream. I grabbed the phone from her and smashed it on the ground. Misty, wake up. From the beginning, I owed you nothing. Only Aunt M.O. She took me in despite your objections. During those five years she was alive, I did my best to take care of her. In contrast, what did you, her biological daughter, do for her? Besides causing trouble outside and upsetting her at home, what did you do? I pointed at Misty, growing more and more furious. If Misty had been more sensible back then, Aunt Emma wouldn't have been so worried and might not have died so early. Misty listened in stunned silence, never expecting me to be so merciless and lay bare the truth. After I touched her sore spot, she became exceptionally angry. Augustine, you're a beast. Your words aren't even human. It was you who moved into my home and took my mother's love, making me rebellious. You killed my mother. You ruined me. I became like this because of you. Don't you have any responsibility? I don't care. You must be good to me for the rest of your life, or I'll never forgive you. With that, Misty picked up her phone from the ground and left with a twisted expression. I could no longer care about her fate and silently left the cemetery. Turning back, I saw Lily standing behind me. She ran to me, crying and hugging me. Agus, you've had it so tough. My heart aches for you. She cried while softly comforting me. 
I felt warmth in my heart and hugged her tightly. What are you doing here? Did you hear everything just now? Lily nodded, wiping her tears with her sleeve. You were unhappy last night, and I was worried about you. Today I left work early and went to your company, but you weren't there. I remembered today was Aunt Mo's death anniversary, so I guessed you'd be here and came looking. I was afraid Misty would make things harder for you if she saw me, so I hid behind a tree. You won't blame me for taking matters into my own hands and eavesdropping on your conversation, will you? With that, Lily looked up at me, worry etched on her face. Chapter 6 I held her hand as we walked out, giving her a light squeeze on the palm. Since you're worried about me, I won't hold it against you, but you can't do something so dangerous behind my back again. The cemetery is deserted, and it's getting late. It's not safe for you to come here alone. Hearing this, Lily was delighted. She stood on tiptoe and gently kissed my cheek, then shyly stepped back. Hey Gus, are you worried about me? Did I hear that right? I kissed her back and ruffled her hair affectionately. Of course I'm worried about you, silly. You're my fiancé now. Lily leaned against me, her voice tender. Hey Gus, with your love, I'm so happy. As we walked out of the cemetery, a flash of light suddenly shone in front of us. Misty stood there, holding her phone. She glared at us with a look of disgust and spoke angrily. How dare you flaunt your love in front of my mother's grave? Just wait, I'll expose your dirty secrets. If you know what's good for you, you'll break up immediately and stop this disgusting act in front of me. Seeing Misty's face, Lily hid behind me in fear. Hey Gus, have I caused you trouble? No matter what happens, I don't want to be separated from you. I squeezed her hand tightly, comforting her. It's okay, I won't let anyone separate us. Misty looked at us with contempt and laughed maniacally. You two act like a couple really well. It's truly annoying. If you disgust me, I can disgust you right back. Just wait, Augustine. I'll make you crawl back to me, begging for forgiveness. Seeing Misty's deranged expression, I could only shake my head. This woman was becoming more and more outrageous. Given our past, I felt I had to remind her of a few things. Misty, I'll say it again. Lily and I are truly engaged, and you need to accept that reality. We are together not to spite you or to put on a show. Secretly filming us and threatening us is already bad enough. Continue down this path, and you'll be skirting the edge of the law. If you dare to hurt Lily, I won't show any mercy. Hearing me mention my fiancé, Misty gave Lily a jealous look. Vixen, do you think you're worthy of being with my boyfriend? He helped you, and it's understandable that you're grateful and playing along. But don't take it too far. Otherwise, I can't guarantee that the bad things from before won't happen again. With that, the mad woman stormed off. Lily suddenly clutched her head in pain and screamed. Why? Why do people treat me like this? What did I do wrong to deserve this punishment from heaven? Sensing something was wrong, I quickly embraced her, offering all kinds of comfort. Lily, no matter what happened in the past, it's over. I'm here now to protect you. No one will hurt you. Rest assured, whoever has wronged you, as long as I can, I'll make it right. I comforted her softly, my mind guessing what Misty might have done to Lily in the past. Otherwise, why would Lily be so afraid every time she saw Misty? Chapter 7 Lily's sudden emotional outburst was clearly triggered by Misty's earlier words. I held my fiancé and comforted her for half an hour before she finally calmed down. Thank you, Agus, for staying by my side during my toughest times. Please don't ask me why this happened now. I'll tell you later. For now, I don't know how to explain it. Let's go home. Agus, seeing the hope in her eyes, I nodded and drove her home. That night, she tossed and turned. Unable to sleep, I mimicked her way of comforting someone, gently patting her back. Then, awkwardly, I sang a lullaby. Lily couldn't help but laugh. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to laugh at you, but your singing is really terrible. She explained shyly, I was genuinely happy. Making her laugh was worth any embarrassment. It's okay, making a beautiful lady laugh is my honor. You can laugh all you want. The more you laugh, the happier I am to sing. With that, I started singing again. Lily, amid intermittent laughter slowly let go of her worries and fell asleep. I thought she would gradually get better, and our lives would also gradually improve. However, Misty started bothering us again. She contacted a junior who worked in the media and posted a video of Lily and me being intimate at the cemetery online. She also fabricated scandalous stories about Lily. Misty claimed that Lily had been unruly since childhood, using her looks to seduce men for tuition fees and thus graduating from college. After graduation, she allegedly used her body to get a high position in a big company. Now, she was portrayed as a homewrecker, breaking up a 10-year relationship. In the rumors, I was depicted as an ungrateful scoundrel who cheated on his girlfriend. I was accused of beating the daughter of my deceased benefactor and girlfriend in front of the benefactor's grave. After beating her, 
I supposedly had an affair with the home wrecker at the grave. Seeing such distorted rumors, I immediately informed the company's legal department. The company was preparing to go public, and such scandals were detrimental to its growth. What I hated most was that Lily got dragged into this mess and had dirt thrown at her because of me. I quickly took Misty and her media junior to court. Moreover, I collaborated with a more powerful media company, turning the tide of public opinion overnight. I cleared up the misunderstandings about Lily, highlighting her years of excellent academic and professional achievements. I also explained the complicated relationship between M.O. Ante, Misty, and me. Of course, I didn't forget to expose Misty's affair with her junior. This left Misty and her junior disgraced. I heard they now had to wear helmets in public to avoid being pelted with rotten eggs. After dealing with these matters, I planned to take Lily on a trip to relax. I hoped she hadn't seen what was online. Even though I had clarified the rumors, and people sympathized with her and admired her strength, malicious words are like nails driven into the skin, removing them leaves scars. I spared no expense to have people remove the defamatory comments about Lily online. However, no matter how hard I tried, someone always brought these comments to her attention. One day, when I came home from work, I heard Misty's abusive voice coming from the open door. Lily, you bitch, don't you go online. Don't you know that the whole internet learned about your dirty deeds a few days ago? Chapter 8. Furious. I stormed into the house, positioning Lily behind me, glaring coldly at Misty. Misty, what are you doing here? You're not welcome. Get out. Misty, acting as if she were invincible, plopped herself down on the sofa. Augustine. Augustine. Who would have thought you had such skills? So this is the new house you bought. Your house is my house. What right does this bitch Lily have to steal it? A cuckoo occupying a magpie's nest. It's Lily who should leave. Now everyone online knows she's a slut. As Misty spoke, she cast a venomous look at Lily. You filthy woman. How can you still live with yourself? You've been exposed online. Why not just die? Although Augustine diverted the public's attention to me, your reputation is ruined for good. Seeing her growing more outrageous, I grabbed Misty by the throat. If you dare insult my fiancé again, do you believe I'll kill you? The one who should die is you. You drove Aunt M.O. to her death. In the name of love, you've trampled on my dignity for ten years. And now you want to hurt Lily. Why don't you just die? Only with your death will this all end. My eyes reddened with rage, my grip on Misty's throat tightening. Misty's eyes widened in terror, her pupils dilating bit by bit. She kept pleading, please, please, let me go. My rationality flickered momentarily, but I didn't want to let Misty off so easily. At this moment, Lily, in tears, rushed over and pried my hands away. Agus, let her go. It's not worth it for someone like her. I know she hurt you, hurt everyone. I also know you want to stand up for me, but I'm not angry. It's unnecessary. The doctor told me this morning that my depression is improving. Our life is getting better. There's really no need to ruin our good days because of this malicious woman. Lily's words, uttered one by one, moved me deeply. Seeing her cry made me cry too. Slowly, I loosened my grip, and Misty took the opportunity to break free from my hold. She clutched her neck, covered in marks, looking at me with lingering fear, coughing uncontrollably. If you ever think of harming Lily again, Remember how many lives you have first. I looked at her with cold eyes, my tone devoid of any warmth. I won't, I won't. For the first time, Misty conceded, scurrying out of my house in disgrace. I closed the door, holding Lily in my arms, trying to calm my emotions. It's okay now, it's all over. I stroked Lily's head, gently comforting her. Lily gradually stopped crying, looked up at me with deep affection. Agus, what others say doesn't really matter. What matters is how you see me. Do you really think I'm as dirty as Misty says? Her eyes were filled with hope, as if she would break if I didn't believe her. I quickly reassured her. How could I believe Misty? You're my fiancé. I trust you are not like that. Hearing this, Lily's face immediately lit up with joy. I knew you would believe me. Just now, you fought for me. I believe you love me. Perhaps even pity me. But sometimes, trust between lovers is more important than love itself. Chapter 9. I nodded, trying to understand Lily's words. Although I couldn't fully grasp what Lily had gone through over the past decade, I had always felt a sense of trust in her. We were high school classmates. After we were separated into different classes in our sophomore year, she was no longer in my class, but I still heard about her occasionally, such as how she always topped the school exams and won various competition prizes. The most memorable thing was hearing the boys talk about her every month, saying she was voted the school beauty again. I often teased those bored boys, asking why they wasted time voting every month if she was always the winner. The boys would call me a bookworm, saying I didn't understand the fun of rating pretty girls. Many boys even planned to pursue her. Without exception, they all failed. Everyone said she was cold and hard to get, seemingly only interested in studying. Some even said she had a crush on someone, 
but no one knew who it was. I was never interested in such gossip, but hearing about her repeatedly formed an impression in my mind. A beautiful girl who wasn't interested in dating, only in studying. Maybe she had a crush, but she hid it well. Such a girl left a positive impression. How could she be associated with those scandals? I absolutely didn't believe it. Agus, aren't you curious why I have depression? Lily looked at me with wide eyes, full of trust. I knew she was about to share her innermost thoughts. I'm curious, but if you don't want to talk about it, I won't force you. It's your personal privacy. Of course, if you're willing to share, I'd be happy to listen. I perked up my ears, not wanting to miss a word that could help me understand her better. Lily sighed and began to recount the past. It turned out she developed depression after starting high school. She had good grades, was very pretty, and was an upright person. While her excellent and bright personality made her popular, it also sparked jealousy among some girls. Those jealous girls targeted her, spreading various rumors to slander her, using all means necessary, gradually. Even the classmates who had a good impression of her started believing the rumors and began to ostracize her. This isolation eventually turned into blatant bullying. Whenever she was alone, she would either encounter boys who purposely disgusted her or be tortured by jealous girls. Over time, she became afraid to walk alone at night. One time, after an evening self-study session, she missed the time to go home with her friends. Left alone, she was blocked on her way home. A group of girls surrounded her, saying extremely nasty things. Some even started to tear at her clothes, taking humiliating photos of her and sharing them for fun. That night, I happened to pass by and stop those girls threatening to call the police if they didn't delete the photos in front of us. Not wanting any trouble, they reluctantly deleted the photos and left. For Lily's safety, I offered to walk her home. It turned out her house was quite close to mine, just two streets away. After that, walking her home became a habit for me. For me, it was just something I did on the way. But for Lily, these actions meant the world. Even giving her the courage to live, do you know, before you saved me, I had been bullied by those classmates for nearly a year. I developed severe depression. I wanted to end my life to escape the pain. It was your help that gave me the courage to keep living. Chapter 10. I hugged Lily tightly, gently pinching her cheek with my fingers. Silly girl. It was just a small act of kindness. I didn't expect it to help you so much. I guess it was fate that brought us together. Lily held my hand tightly and continued. Later, you walked me home every day until we graduated from high school. Do you know? Those were the happiest days of my life. Walking with you for 10 minutes each day was the closest I got to you. Hearing this, I suddenly realized, so, you liked me since high school, people said you had a crush, and that person was me. Lily nodded shyly, yes, ever since you helped me, we had more opportunities to interact, I gradually discovered your many virtues and fell deeply in love with you, she lowered her head again, like a shy schoolgirl experiencing her first crush, I found her so adorable that I couldn't help but ruffle her hair, you liked me, why didn't you tell me, back then, I wasn't dating Misty yet. Mentioning Misty's name made Lily flinch instinctively, fear evident in her eyes. So, I began to make bold guesses. Did Misty deliberately say I was hers to keep you away from me? Lily nodded. You were often with her, living at her house, and you weren't related by blood. So, I thought you always liked her. When you two started dating, I was even more convinced you loved her. Therefore, my feelings for you remained a secret. I looked at Lily in shock, realizing I had missed out on years of happiness. Before dating Misty, I did have a good impression of her. Later, when Lily gradually distanced herself, Misty proposed we date, and I decided to cherish the one in front of me. I speculated, did Misty find out about your secret crush on me, is that why she targeted you? Lily's fearful expression returned, indicating that even mentioning Misty's name triggered a reaction. So, I made another bold assumption. She didn't just target you, she even bullied you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be so afraid of her. Part of your depression must have stemmed from her long-term torment. Right. Lily's body trembled as she started crying. I'm sorry, I should have been braver, but I couldn't help being scared. The incident you saved me from was actually orchestrated by her and a group of people to harm me. She's terrifying, and I've never been able to move past it. I hugged Lily, patting her back and comforting her. Don't worry, bad people will get their comeuppance. Justice will prevail. This was not just to comfort Lily but also a promise to her. A decade-long psychological shadow probably needed some measure of justice for healing. I hired the best lawyer, at great expense to take Misty and her junior to court for slandering us. During this period, I used a private investigator to uncover other harmful schemes they had been involved in. They even conspired to defraud a cancer patient out of nearly a million dollars, which could lead to a prison sentence. I handed the evidence to the police and the judge. Later, Misty and her junior were sentenced to three years in prison. Three years. Not too short. Not too long. Enough for them to learn a lesson. Since Misty was imprisoned, our lives had become much more peaceful. 
Lily's mental health also improved significantly. We had a wedding, inviting all our friends and family. Three months after the wedding, Lily became pregnant with our baby. I touched her belly and vowed to her, I will take good care of this child and not let them suffer as we did. Lily smiled blissfully with you by my side. I feel like I'm tasting sweetness every day. I smiled too. We are not only each other's sugar but also each other's medicine. Healing one another.